Hello, I'm Captain Robert McCullough, and welcome to Police Report, brought to you by the men and women of the Baltimore County Police Department. This program brings you information on crime trends, crime prevention techniques, and information on police department activities and operations. In today's program, we'll be speaking with Sergeant Anissa Watkins of the Baltimore County Police Department's Safe Schools section. She will discuss the school resource officer program and provide us with some back to school safety tips. Later in the show, we'll talk with Officer Jonathan Strickler and Ms. Susan Joyner of the Traffic Resource Management section. They will tell you how you can help Baltimore County by becoming a school crossing guard and pro provide us with some school bus and pedestrian safety tips for this school year. For years, Baltimore County has had school resource officers provided by the police department and its public schools. The SRO program has found, been found to be very effective and has enhanced safety for students, teachers, and administrative staff. With me to discuss the school resource officer program is Sergeant Anissa Watkins of the Safe School Section. Sergeant Watkins, welcome to Police Report. Thank you for having me here, sir. Now, the, uh, the school resource officer, uh, first of all, if you could start out by just simply telling our viewers, what is a school resource officer? Okay, a school resource officer is a Baltimore County police officer that happens to be assigned to a Baltimore County public school. So currently we have about 64 school resource officers. They are assigned to every middle school and high school. They have three primary job functions. One is law-related education, the second is mentoring and counseling student, and third, they are a law enforcement police officer, so they still have police duties. Now, let's talk about those responsibilities. You, you, you talk about law enforcement education. Uh, what are some of the things that they do with law enforcement education? Okay, so our middle school officers are required to teach DARE, drug abuse resistance education training to our sixth grade students. Basically, they go into the classrooms every year and speak to every sixth grade classes with assigned lesson plans. And basically, they talk about drug use and all of the problems that they could cause. Our high school SROs, however, teach a variety of subjects. They go into classroom as guest speakers. They talk about current crime trends and anything that's happening within the school and the community. Some examples include uh, robberies, theft, personal safety, um, how do you protect your property and how do you protect yourself on school campus. Mm -hmm. So those are just some examples of what our high school SROs communicate to our Baltimore County high school students and staff. Now, another uh, element of that mission is, you said, mentoring. Um, talk about the mentoring that they do and some of the things that they do inside the school. So many students trust our police officers, and they tend to go to them for advice, encouragement, um, anything that they can talk to them about. Sometimes they're not comfortable speaking to a parent or speaking to a staff member about any personal issues, or sometimes they just go simply for career development. So the SRO plays a huge role uh, as a mentoring piece because the goal ultimately is to bridge that gap between youth and law enforcement. Now explain briefly how the SRO program works on a daily basis in terms of the, uh, the SRO themselves when they go to school and the things that they do throughout the day. So school resource officers report to their police station at the beginning of the day. They pick up their equipment and they go on to their school to begin their day. They work side by side with administration. They patrol the halls. A school is like a city within itself. Um, during their time in patrolling the halls, they communicate with staff members, they communicate with students, they uh, check the school for safety issues or safety concerns, they ensure that video cameras are functioning properly. Um, they want to promote a safe and orderly learning environment, and they are there to assist the administration with everything. Okay. Now, uh, we have SROs in high schools and middle schools yes. now. Is there any difference between the role in the high school versus the, the middle school? The only difference is what they teach. Um, as stated, the middle school officers are required to teach there while the high school officers have to teach several other subjects. Um, there are no significant differences besides the ages of the students and how they approach the students would be different because you're, you're working with two different age groups. And why is it so important to have school resource officers? Well, 
number one is some of the recent incidents that's happened throughout the country required us to have some additional protection in schools. The SRO is a deterrent to crime. First and foremost, they have a police car. They're in full uniform. They have all of their police equipment. So they do provide a sense of security for the school, the parents, the staff, um, and especially for the students. That's one of the most important functions that they provide in that building. Secondly, it's bridging that gap between youth and law enforcement. Um, as you know, with some incidents that's happened nationwide, the relationship has suffered. The SROs are there to help rebuild that relationship and continue to regain the trust within that community. Now, many of our SROs have been in their schools for quite a while, yes. and they become a very integral part of the school community. Uh, what are some of the other roles and some of the other things that you see SROs doing around the county? Many of the SROs run their own after-school programs that involve students and staff. Um, it's, again, continuing to bridge that gap between youth and law enforcement. So they run separate programs for male students. They run programs for female students um, to meet their needs and whatever the issues are that may be going on at the school at the time. A lot of our SROs participate in coaching. They coach basketball, baseball, football. Um, they either help coaches or they work the team themselves or work with the team themselves. Um, our SROs also provide services for parents. They attend PTA meetings. They attend back to school nights. They attend faculty and staff meetings. And they also provide teaching, training, and education. Now, the, the uh, SRO program's clearly been very successful. Uh, what has been some of the feedback that we've gotten back from uh, parents, students, teachers about the, the role and the performance of our SROs in Baltimore County? Well, some of the feedback that we receive is just the courtesy um, that they get when they respond to a school to speak to a police officer. They feel safe. They feel secure. They feel comfortable. They trust their officer. They're able to walk up and talk to a police officer, whereas they weren't able to do that before. Now that they have a police officer that they're able to see every single day, it makes them even more comfortable to approach any police officer. Now, one of the biggest issues uh, in our schools around the county uh, typically deals with cell phones. Tell us about some of the problems that we're seeing in our schools involving cell phones. So some of the problems that we're seeing uh, involving cell phones include cell phone theft and even robberies, unfortunately. Um, we encourage students to please put your cell phones away. You, you're provided a locker. Lock your cell phone up or keep it on your person. Um, as we know, when we leave items out, unfortunately, it's subject to be stolen. Um, as far as the robberies are concerned, many students don't quite understand what the consequences are uh, when a crime like that occurs. And that happens when a student assaults another student and takes the property. It's no longer a second degree assault. At that point, it's considered a robbery, which is a felony. Um, but those are some of the main issues that we're seeing. And cell phones, are, they're quick. They're easy to take. Um, one of the easiest, they're light. You can easily conceal them. And they disappear when we're not being vigilant. Now, um, in terms of safety also, why is it important for students and staff in the school environment to be aware of their surroundings and what's going on during, throughout the school day or even the school year? It's very important for us to be vigilant at all times because we want to make sure that nothing is going on that we don't know about. We want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. We want to make sure we're protecting our property. And we all are part of keeping the community safe. Even though the police officers, it, it's its primary function, we need everyone in the school and in the community to help us also. Because if they don't report the crime that is occurring, then we don't really have much to go on to help assist or to deter the crime. Now, our viewers, many of them live in and around schools. Um, if they see suspicious activity uh, in or around a school in their neighborhood, what should they do? If you see something, say something. We always encourage people to call the police and make a report. It doesn't matter how small they think the incident is. doesn't matter if they feel like someone else called. It's very important for you to call when you see it because we need to act on it. And it same saying that's been going on for years, if you see something, say something. If it doesn't look right, then pick up the phone and make a phone call. Now, let's talk about safety plan. Uh, why is it important for there to be safety plans uh, now that we're going back to school? So safety plans for the school are, are managed by the Department of School Safety. Mm -hmm. And basically, they want to make sure that schools are preparing their teachers and students for 
a safe school day, a safe and orderly environment. So they want to make sure their emergency plans are up to date so that students know where to go in the event of an emergency. They want to make sure students know where to go in the event of severe weather. They also want to make sure the students understand what is going on in, in the community and they want to make sure the students know what to do in the event of a community incident where they may not be able to go home that day. Okay, and, and, and with that, uh, many times our viewers hear terms used like lockdown or alert. Can you explain the difference between a school lockdown and a school alert? Sure. Typically, we will suggest that the school go into a lockdown status mm -hmm. when there's an incident that is directly affecting the school, meaning there could be an intruder or an assailant, an active shooter inside of the building. We immediately request that the school go into a lockdown, which means all classroom doors are locked, all lights are out, no one's moving, no one's talking, and everyone is braced against the wall. For an alert status, it typically happens when there's an incident going on in the community, such as a barricade that may be happening in a neighborhood a couple of miles away from our schools. Basically, that means that all the exterior doors are locked and we're not allowed to, not, not allowed to let anyone inside the building or outside of the building. However, students can continue on throughout their school day. We just want to make sure that no one's entering or exiting the building while the police are working on the emergency incident. And I noticed you're wearing a, a body-worn camera. Um, are the SROs equipped with body-worn cameras? And kind of explain the role of the camera in the school environment. So all SROs will be equipped with body-worn cameras by the beginning of the school year. And the role is simply transparency. We want to regain our trust in the community. Um, some nationwide incidents caused our relationship to suffer within the community. And part of wearing these body cameras is letting the community know that we want to be transparent and we want to regain trust. The body more cameras protects the citizens and it also works to protect the officers. And, and once again, um, the role of the SRO, just, just tell us how important that is in the school. Very important. Um, our administration has worked with our SROs since 1997, since the inception of the program, and they are a very integral part of the school community, where they assist administration with emergencies. They also assist administration with day-to-day -day safety issues and safety concerns. And just their visibility makes the public comfortable, makes the community comfortable, and makes the student comfortable. Seeing your SRO walking throughout the hallway, uh, many people are surprised how they can just walk up to the police officer, whereas that wasn't happening before. Mm -hmm. But because they're so comfortable having them in the building, they feel safe, they feel secure, they feel protected. It's always interesting to see the relationship between the kids and the SROs yes. and how close they are and how well they work together. Very much so, um, and I was an SRO myself for quite a few years um, before coming back home to supervise and manage the program, and it was probably one of the most rewarding positions that I've ever had throughout the 19 years that I've been on this department. Um, in fact, uh, some of the students who were students at Perry Hall High School during my eight-year time there are actually on this police department now. Okay, and, and finally, what would you tell someone that's interested in becoming a police officer or an SRO? I would tell them to talk to police officers, um, get as much information as they can about as many agencies as they can. I would tell them that it's still a very honorable position, um, it's a very respectable position. And just to understand what happens day by day with our job and, and what we put on the line for the citizens. So basically I would say do your research, come talk to me or anybody who you know and we can tell you what the job is, is about. Okay, thank you, Sergeant Anissa Watkins. Thank you. As you can see, the job of keeping our schools safe is a very important one. The men and women who work as SROs in Baltimore County Public Schools are great role models to our children and provide a valuable service by protecting our future generations. We also hope that you will follow the safety tips provided by Sergeant Watkins today. If you would like additional information, please contact the Baltimore County Safe Schools section at 443-809-6487. We'd like to thank Sergeant Anissa Watkins for being with us on Police Report. Thank you for having me. Coming up next in our program, we'll speak with Officer Jonathan Strickler and Ms. Susan Joyner of the Traffic Resource Management section. They will tell you how you can become a crossing guard and will provide us with some school bus and pedestrian safety tips for the back to school season. But first, this message.